Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the last session of uh, uh, of today. Uh, we of course have two workshops tomorrow. Uh, there have been a lot of questions from folks about uh, you know. Uh, I was only able to attend one session. There are three other parallel sessions going on. Will we be able to get the videos? So absolutely, every year, uh, you know, post the conference, we do uh, some post processing and put all the videos out there. Uh, they will be available on the YouTube channel, free for anybody to watch later. Uh, so we will put all of this back into the community, and they will be available. Uh, I just wanted to quickly thank uh, all our sponsors before I hand it over to Jonathan. Uh, as we all know that uh, their support, and it's not just the financial support, right? Their support in terms of helping us, uh, you know, market the conference, help us with the content, help us on several other factors is very crucial for this community and everyone coming together uh, to make this conference happen. So just wanted to really uh, take a minute and acknowledge Browser Stack, Lambda Test, Sauce Lab, and Specmatic for supporting the conference. So, uh, you know, big shout out to the sponsors. Uh, of course, I just want to quickly again thank the program committee who's been behind it and the volunteers who've done a fantastic job throughout the day, making sure the sessions run on time, they uh, handle the Q&A, etc. So just wanted to quickly thank that. With that, I think I want to hand it over to the man himself, uh, Jonathan, uh, the project lead. And obviously, you've already seen him on the panel earlier today. Uh, Jonathan, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, part of this community and just wanted to thank uh, you on behalf of everyone for leading the charter on this. I know uh, it's a lot of work in addition to your daytime job. So really wanted to appreciate on behalf of everyone what you're doing. And uh, would uh, love you to kick off the State of the Union. Thank you, Naresh. Uh, sharing my screen now. And uh, yeah, I just want to say it's an honor to be here. I always feel very excited uh, to be a part of Appium Conference. And, um, you know, I would say if you were at the committer panel just recently, you would know that if I've done anything for the project, it's mostly to put out uh, half broken code that other people feel is so bad they have to come fix and then they become maintainers and then the project gets along very well. So um, I think that's uh, that's mostly my role as a project lead is to uh, encourage other people to come and and uh, and do do the hard work of, of fixing uh, my mistakes. So um, that's worked out pretty well for Appium. Um, so let's talk about how things are going at the project. Uh, that's kind of the purpose of this talk is just to have a check in give a little bit of a, a survey of um, kind of the core projects, uh, projects, the uh, sub projects, and to also uh, do a little survey of the ecosystem and uh, look towards the future a bit as well. So um, in case this is your first time uh, running across me in the Appium community, uh, I actually just recently started a, a brand new job a couple of weeks ago at, uh, on the PlayStation team at Sony. Um, working on kind of testing tools and the strategies there as a as an engineer. Um, so very, very excited about this and uh, having a lot of fun so far. Um, in terms of Appium, I've been with the project from the very, very beginning. So it's, uh, you know, 11 and a half years now that, that Appium has been around and it's been um, a wild and fun uh, and really rewarding ride, uh, kind of taking part and everything that's been going on between that and now. Uh, when um, we first started the code for Appium, I was working as an engineer at Sauce Labs. Uh, for a while, I ran an Appium consulting firm called Cloud Gray. And most recently, before Sony, I spent um, a long time at uh, Headspin. So uh, that's a bit of my background and why I'm chatting with you today. Uh, if you want to find me on various social media, um, Twitter, or I refuse to call it X. I don't know. Anyway, uh, GitHub, LinkedIn, I'm, I'm J lips on those places. So you can figure out that later. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is, um, Appium 2's vision and how it's fared since launch, some updates with the core Appium server, some updates with the ecosystem, which is probably the most interesting area for most of you who use Appium, because this is where the actual 
uh, automation platform support is. That's what we call drivers in Appium terminology. And uh, plugins, that's where plugins live, is in our ecosystem. So the ecosystem is in some ways uh, much more important to the overall Appium project than the core Appium server is, for example, because the ecosystem is what lets you do things that you want on apps on platforms that you want. We'll talk about the inspector, which is an extremely uh, important part of the Appium project. We'll talk about um, a new form of the WebDriver protocol called WebDriver Baidai, which uh, is going to be more and more relevant and which we're thinking about a lot these days for Appium. And, you know, briefly some plans for the future, as well as a very exciting new contributor compensation scheme that we've announced in recent months and a check in about how that's going. Uh, as well as, of course, always with open source projects, a request for your help in different areas, to try and inspire you to get on board with us and what we're doing. So um, let's first talk about the Appium vision, right? Um, so in the early days of Appium, the goal was very simple. It was just to find a better way to automate iOS applications because there wasn't a really good way to do that in 2000 and 12, right? Um, so Appium started as an attempt to find a little bit more standard, a little bit more performant way of automating iOS apps. And it kind of grew organically from there. Um, added Android support uh, later in 2013, early 2014, and tried to support iOS and Android primarily, um, as is still the case. But then as we were working on Appium for a long time, we realized that there was actually a bigger vision here. This is what for a while we called um, star driver vision um, to indicate that we were thinking of driving all kinds of platforms and not just uh, iOS or Android or uh, web browsers. So this bigger vision was a vision of a, a flexible, and kind of infinitely extensible standard automation API for all app, app platforms. So automating any kind of app on any kind of platform in a way that you could mix and match all kinds of additional functionality that's provided for, for free or at cost uh, by people in the Appium community. So that was the vision behind Appium 2. So we did launch Appium 2 after you know, several years of development uh last june in 2023 and it was ready to go to um express this vision it was itself not the kind of full completion of that vision but it was the groundwork for it um so with appium 2 we launched uh drivers and plugins that anybody could write and that anybody could uh release to the rest of the community um, and that's kind of the foundation of how this vision needs to be implemented. And so uh, since the release, we actually have seen the ecosystem develop in many ways, as we had hoped, uh, towards this vision of a completely, you know, automatable, uh, flexible future. Um, and so it's been exciting to see that. I think we're still uh, in the early stages of this. So in this presentation, I'll try and point out a couple of the interesting developments in the ecosystem that I think uh, contribute towards this broader vision. And then my hope is, of course, to inspire you to continue to build towards it by adding your own components to the Appium ecosystem. But first, let's go through some updates on the core Appium server. Uh, so if you're new to Appium and you don't know what I mean by the core Appium server, this is the, the part of Appium that you run on the command line and that listens for WebDriver commands from your test script. And uh, on its own, it does very little. It has to be paired with uh, what we call a driver to understand how to implement a given WebDriver protocol command on a given platform. But it is the kind of most important central engine that that powers uh, all of Appium and that provides all the libraries that are relied on by all of the drivers uh, that they hold in common. So some updates here. Um, 
because of the way we kind of conceived Appium 2, the Appium server itself has a much smaller surface area now. So things like Android and iOS drivers are not bundled into the Appium server tightly as they were before. So this means that the Appium server itself is more lightweight um, and less subject to change because we've now have a very flexible architecture that allows most of the innovation, development, uh, maintenance of platform support and custom capabilities to take place in the driver and plugin ecosystem. So the Appium server itself uh, is not intended to change as much as uh, it has in the past. So um, that's good. And that's actually what's been happening. So we've seen a little bit less uh, work here in the core server because it is inherently more stable now. Um, there are some small updates worth calling out. Uh, we now have session IDs and all um, uh, log lines, which helps to relate uh, logs to particular sessions that are running on an Appium server, especially if there's more than one running at a time. We've got the new Appium setup command, which uh, takes some of the pain out of installing uh, multiple drivers after you've installed the Appium server. This just kind of gets you the standard set of Appium drivers and plugins without having to worry too much about uh, which ones you might want. Uh, if you're ever submitting a bug report to the Appium project, uh, we have this show debug info flag that you can pass to the Appium command, which will give you lots of information about your system and Appium, which makes it easy to submit a bug report uh, and give us as maintainers lots of details to use in uh, debugging the issue. Uh, we also now have compatibility checks between extensions, which covers the concept of drivers and plugins, uh, and server compatibility checks. So making sure that a given extension and the given version of the Appium server will play nicely together um, and give you an error or warning if that's not determined to be the case. And some larger updates worth covering as well. We've added WebDriver BiDi support to the core Appium server, which means that all Appium drivers can now implement WebDriver BiDi commands with just a few additional lines of code in those drivers. But I'll share more on WebDriver BiDi later because uh, we have a whole section dedicated to that. Um, we've made some updates to Appium Doctor, uh, and we've brought the Appium Doctor into um, Appium itself. So you can now run Appium Doctor on any driver or plugin that you have installed, and the Doctor checks will be plugged or will be pulled directly from that driver or plugin uh, and run. So this means that any driver or plugin in the ecosystem can export their own Doctor checks for people to use with uh, Appium Doctor as part of uh, confirming the setup and installation and requirements are, are all present. And you can now, if you want, run the Appium server uh, behind SSL. So you could uh, host a, a, an HTTPS version of the Appium server if you want people from the outside world to be connecting to it and want to make sure that the uh, traffic back and forth between client scripts and server is encrypted so that folks from the outside can't read it. Um, do I recommend running an Appium server that's exposed to the outside world? Not really, but some people want to do this, so uh, they can now do it more securely, which is better than the alternative. And of course, many, many fixes that uh, you could read about in the change logs if you're interested that aren't worth uh, mentioning here specifically. Okay, let's move on to some updates from the ecosystem. First, touching on the core drivers. And by core drivers, we mean the drivers that are maintained uh, as part of the Appium organization on GitHub, maintained by the Appium core team and friends. So first one to cover is the XUI test driver, which is our uh, driver used to automate iOS applications. We've recently added uh, log streaming over WebDriver BiDi, so you can um, receive logs from the server instead of having to pull the server for logs. Um, we've added the ability to run arbitrary commands uh, on the sim control library, which is included with, uh, with Xcode. 
Um, we've added full page screenshots for Safari and web views. So this has been a request for a long time uh, and is now achievable. So you can either get the, the normal viewport screenshot or you can get uh, a render of the entire uh, web view page so that you don't need to scroll and stitch things together yourself, which is obviously a huge pain. Uh, some improvements added to our alert detection um, system, uh, which is also welcome news for many. And uh, we fixed a few issues with automating uh, React web applications, React-based front-end um, frameworks uh, applications, so that um, we don't run into some of the issues with inputting uh, text that, that existed before. Some stuff to do with time zones, uh, some better video recording, um, using tools provided by Apple itself. So um, it's theoretically, you know, better quality, faster, whatever. Uh, the ability to uh, simulate an out of memory warning that uh, your app can then handle. Um, so apps can listen for, you know, low memory warnings. And this is a way to, on simulator at least, uh, trigger that warning so that your app believes that it's almost running out of memory and you can verify that what your app does to respond to that uh, matches the expected behavior. Pretending to have a keyboard attached to an iPad so you can you know, type keyboard keys uh, as if a keyboard were connected. Um, some calibration for the native web tab capability, which some of you might have had to use in the past. Uh, the ability to clear application data without forcibly removing the app from the device as a whole, and many other fixes. Right. So I'm just kind of blasting through some of the things here that uh, that that have been of note maybe in the last year or so of development. Um, so you can see some things here that might be of utility for you in your use case. So similar, we've got the UI Automator 2 driver, which is our core Android driver. And I'll just kind of open up some of these here um, to go over them. One of my favorite new features is the ability to uh, inject an image to be used as the source of the camera stream. So if you're wanting to test, um, let's say an app that uses a QR code reader or something like that, you can now set an image source to be used uh, instead of whatever the emulator or real device would be looking at from the perspective of the camera. You can turn on and off uh, Bluetooth and um, NFC functionality. There's another low memory simulation, um, which is similar to what I described for iOS previously, uh, and, and some other things like that. Um, moving on to Espresso, We've got the ability to determine for the first time whether the Espresso server, which is kind of built and bundled into your application under test, and the Espresso driver, which runs on the Appium side, uh, the ability to check whether those are actually compatible. Because theoretically, you might have a new version of the driver, an older version of the Espresso server running inside your app, and those might be incompatible. And before it would just result in kind of undefined errors or behavior uh, if there were any incompatibilities. And now we have some actual compatibility checks. Um, this is something I'll touch on later as well, but we have the ability to um, actually include Espresso. I should say we're working on this. It's not maybe fully, fully baked yet, but the ability to um, include the Espresso server as an app dependency. Because ultimately it gets run in your app anyway. And previously we were kind of opening up your app and shoving the server in and hoping it worked, but there could then be dependency conflicts between the Espresso server and your app. Uh, so now we want it to be kind of a library that you could include as a strict dependency in your applications so that then dependency uh, management is easier. and um, we don't need to do any unzipping of your app and shoving the Espresso server in there. Instead, it's all built into your, the test version of your app. And uh, when we launch your app, the server is there ready to talk to the Espresso driver. Uh, we also have the camera uh, image injection we talked about before. 
and some other updates and fixes. Uh, moving on, you may or may not know that we actually have a driver for uh, Mac OS native apps. It's called the Mac 2 driver just because it's there used to be a Mac 1 driver, and now this one's better. Um, and I'll just oops, show you some of these features here. Um, I like that we can now have deep link support so you can open up an app uh, with the URL that passes information into the app. If it's configured to read that information, it can you know, open up a particular screen or a particular resource directly um, as we're all used to nowadays when, when clicking on links in, in messages or web pages. Um, let's briefly touch on some of the other drivers that are, are out there. There's a, a pretty much brand new driver for working with Flutter applications um, made by uh, our helpful friends at the Appium Test Distribution Project, um, Srini and Sai and um, Sudarshan and folks like that. Um, so if you write Flutter apps, definitely give this one a try. Uh, if you want to test Windows desktop apps, native apps on Windows, uh, for a long time, you would have had to use WinApp Driver, uh, which is a project that was abandoned by Microsoft a long time ago. It doesn't really work very well. Uh, there's a new project that's worth checking out that's fairly new. Uh, well, I, I guess I just said it was a new project. Um, it's uh, it, it's uh, still under development, let's say, but it's worth trying because it um, is more modern and has more capabilities than WinApp Driver did. And there's actually an Appium uh, driver wrapper for it as well. So you don't need to um, uh, launch the, uh, the server yourself. It can be automatically downloaded and run and um, you can just plug it into Appium using the Appium driver install command there. And then on the media front um, at uh, Headspin, the, uh, the team there has developed a Roku driver, a Tizen TV driver, and an LG Web OS TV driver. So if you're building media apps for any of these TV platforms, um, these are, you know, very full featured and have a lot of ways to automate and um, check out the uh, source of the app and stuff like that. So recommend checking out these other drivers. And then a quick tour of some of the plugins that are available currently in the ecosystem. Um, I'm not really going to talk about changes to the core plugins. So core plugins would include things that um, the Appium team ourselves maintain. Things like the images plugin that allow you to uh, find an, an element on the screen by a template image. Things like um, the universal XML plugin, the relaxed capabilities plugin. Uh, there might be one or two others there. Oh, yeah, the execute driver script plugin. These haven't really changed much in the last year. Um, they basically, this is one of the nice things about plugins, is they can have a very kind of small constrained focus and they can basically be done uh, without needing lots of continued development and still provide the utility that they're meant to provide. And people can just mix and match plugins uh, for different purposes. Um, some, uh, some new plugins in the last year or at least largely updated. We've got the Appium Device Farm plugin, which is um, very interesting. It's got a kind of hybrid open source model where much of it is open source and it, the whole thing remains free to use, um, which is nice. It's basically a plugin that allows you to host a local device farm and to call out to cloud services like Sauce Labs or Browser Stack or Headspin or Lambda Test. I'm pretty sure it supports all of them for extra capacity or for devices that you have uh, on those cloud services instead of locally. Um, you can check it out here. Um, I'll show a video in a second that I got from, uh, from the ATD folks about, um, how with the Appium device farm, it even uses some, some clever technology under the hood to allow you to connect up devices, iOS devices to a Linux host and make them available to, uh, your device farm, which, uh, is pretty cool as in the past, you've often had to have Macintosh hosts. Uh, in order to connect iOS devices and automate them. Um, and so this kind of introduces a lot of flexibility into your uh, kind of homebrew device farm. There's an Appium uh, 
large language model plugin that I kind of wrote experimentally a little while back at Headspin. And it kind of, it, it uses uh, LLMs like ChatGPT and some interesting prompt engineering to allow you to send in a description of the element you want to Appium and have it come back uh, with the, the actual element uh, resource. Uh, and what it does under the hood is simply it tries to uh, turn your natural language element description into a locator that your client can use to uh, get a handle of the actual element. And it, it works sort of. Um, anyway, there's a, there's a webinar out there on this that you can find that's public. I would say it's not very useful yet, but I think it's an example of how uh, someone out there smarter than me could probably um, create some interesting uh, AI ML plugins for Appium, uh, maybe using this as some, some inspiration and maybe giving us some more useful AI ML uh, functionality into Appium in this way. There's the link for that. Uh, there's an Appium weight plugin. Um, which I think is kind of funny because it, to me, it, it's basically uh, a plugin that brings back implicit weights, uh, which for a long time we were told not to use, but um, there is something very useful about them if it works for your case, worth checking out. Here's a little video that I mentioned of um, a couple iOS devices connected to Linux hosts in the form of Raspberry Pis, so obviously very cheap Linux hosts, and then the uh, the Appium Device Farm plugin, which hosts its own website, its own web application that you can access locally. And here we have an example of um, the manual remote control feature of the Device Farm plugin, being able to remote control these iOS devices uh, that are connected to the Device Farm plugin via these. Uh, Linux Raspberry Pi hosts. So that's a that's it's pretty cool. It's it's a it's a lot of features living in a, a single Appium plugin. So I think it shows the power of Appium plugins that can be something very small, like something that just translates XML from one form to another, or something very massive like an entire uh device farm <laughs> here with its own web interface. Uh so that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, some more plugins that I'll just briefly mention. Um, we've got a gestures plugin that takes the work out of having to construct your own touch actions for gestures if you don't want to. Um, we've got uh, a man in the middle proxy plugin called the interceptor plugin that basically uh, wraps um, wraps a midim proxy and it would at the end of the day what it allows you to do is allows you to control the network. Uh, responses that um, an Android device receives. So if you want to mock out a response uh, to a particular request to make your testing more stable or to get the app into a certain state, um, you can use this plugin instead of having to set up your own uh, man in the middle machinery. And then there's some, some data related plugins that I think are very interesting examples of, again, small plugins that provide utility for specific cases. So um, if you're hosting an Appium server somewhere and you want to get information about how it's operating or how commands are running or how long commands are taking, the number of commands that are happening, um, the kinds of you know observability metrics that we take for granted nowadays with any kind of hosted um, service, well, you've got a couple plugins here you can choose from to send the data uh, transparently from the Appium server about everything that's going on to an external uh, data store so that you can examine that data with the tools that you're used to using. And we've got some cool inspector updates, uh, much better documentation that uses the standard Appium docs, the ability to actually rename your saved capability sets, um, some improvements in how we auto-generate um, suggested locators when you click on an element in the um, inspector view. Uh, so you can see here in this example, we now have things like um, conjunctive uh, attributes where an element might not be unique by its name, but if its name and its label um, together create uh, the ability to find an element uniquely, then we'll actually be intelligent enough in our heuristic here to um, suggest that. 
We've uh, refreshed the way that code generation works in our recorder um, so that it's now up to date with kind of the latest uh, ways of using each of the client libraries that are supported for code generation in the recorder. We've added the ability to import and export save gestures. Uh, save gestures are a very powerful feature in the inspector. So you can build multi-touch gestures that you wouldn't be able to implement normally on a remote device, play them back on any session that you have going in the inspector. And now if you have a bunch of um, gestures that you'd like to share with a colleague or port from one computer to another, you can now export them from one instance of the inspector and then uh, import them into another. So you don't have to do the work of rebuilding those gesture libraries, uh, which can be a little time consuming. We've fixed compatibility issues with Selenium Grid, and we've um, updated some of the underlying technologies for the inspector so that it's running on um, close to the latest Electron, if not the latest, and using more modern um, JavaScript bundling technology. So this is just something you have to do with JavaScript every year or so is completely migrate your bundling stack uh, because that's what people love doing apparently. Okay, um, let's get to a fun new topic, which is WebDriver by die. So this is a major update to the WebDriver protocol. Um, the existing protocol basically only lets you have one-way communication between the client and the server, between your test and Appium. Um, that's because it's based on HTTP, uh, which is a kind of unidirectional client-server model. You make a request, you get a response, and that's it. There's no kind of two-way communication uh, possible in the basic HTTP standard. So this means that if something happens on the server that it would like the client to know about, it can't let the client know until the next time the client checks in with the server, which kind of limits the, uh, the types of functionality that we can have in Appium or Selenium. So um, enter WebDriver BiDi, which stands for bidirectional. And this is being pioneered by the, uh, the W3C uh, working group. Um, and a lot of the Selenium maintainers are part of that and browser teams from different companies are um, kind of defining this new spec. And basically the way it works is that when you start uh, a regular vanilla HTTP session with a web driver server, be it Selenium or Appium, um, a client can now upgrade that connection to use WebSockets instead of HTTP. So it can establish a kind of long lived uh, bi-directional communication channel between the client and the server. And because these connections, these socket connections are um, long lived, it can facilitate uh, types of behaviors that we weren't able to introduce before, because now the client and server can asynchronously at any time send information to each other, even if something else is still happening. Uh, and even if this is going from the server to the client. So basically the idea behind Baidai is now you can run the entire web driver protocol, things like find element, get page source, um, send, send keys and things like that through the Baidai socket connection in addition to the regular HTTP connection, which just uh, means that these commands will take place faster without all the overhead of HTTP. So schematically, again, it kind of looks like new session request goes from client to server, new session response comes back from the server to the client, but it includes this new BiDi socket URL uh, in the new session response that the client can use to say, all right, the server speaks BiDi, I'm gonna open up a connection uh, to its BiDi socket. And then from then on, all of the web driver commands uh, that it wants can be sent over this connection. Uh, and it, the server can even send async events back to the client at any time until the end of the session. So uh, this enables new capabilities like notifying events that happen in the app under test or platform, like an alert has appeared, a page is navigated, we need some auth credentials for this, uh, a download is starting, a new log has been added to the console. These are all browser examples, for example. Uh, we can add uh, the ability to do essentially what you would have needed a man in the middle proxy to do before, to tell the browser to respond to a network request with some custom data instead of 
actually going out to the internet and getting that data from the host. And this is just the beginning, right? We we don't uh, we haven't plumbed the depths of what's possible to do here with Bidite. We're still thinking about it. Specifically for Appium, uh, as I mentioned before, the server now supports Bidai. And um, you know, Appium drivers can now say that they in particular support Bidai and can implement uh, Bidai specific commands or send events to Bidai connected clients. Of course, uh, native apps on iOS or Android, for example, are not web apps. And so our XCUI test driver or UI Automator 2 driver by default, don't come with all of the kind of web standard by die commands. Uh, some of them wouldn't even make sense for native apps. Um, so we're at the beginning of this process with Appium of figuring out what sorts of commands we should add by die support for. And so far, we've just added one or two things. Um, at, at this time, with the latest XUI test and Android drivers, um, you can actually set up a, a BiDi event handler to be notified whenever there's, uh, for example, a system log uh, or an Appium log that's been added. So you can receive that and, and handle that asynchronously rather than having to pull the server for those logs using the, the get log uh, HTTP method or something like that. What's next? Uh, video streaming uh, would be a good example of something that we would want to do so that you know, right now, if you want to get a video recording of your Appium session, you have to start it using one command and then stop it some other time in your test. Uh, but if that time is very far from the time you started the video, the generated video might be multiple gigabytes, many gigabytes, and it might cause problems uh, in memory or on disk or going over the wire to your client. So you could imagine in a BiDi world, uh, the code on the right is sort of a pseudocode example of what you could do, where you could just get chunks of uh, streaming video at any time and do what you want with it. You could forward it to somebody who's watching that live. Uh, you could write it to a file and avoid the memory overhead of trying to process a gigantic video all in memory. Um, you can convert it. You can do analysis on it, you know, frame by frame, whatever it is. So it just opens up a lot of possibilities for some of these more advanced use cases. So uh, some of our plans for the future, uh, just touching on before we wrap up here and open up for a few questions. Uh, we want to continue to work on the main server. We, as I said, want to improve the Espresso driver dependency situation so that this driver is more accessible to people uh, who, who are, are not maybe um, professional Android engineers. Um, so this should make it a little easier to use and consume. We want to continue to maintain our core drivers and plugins and also encourage the development of drivers and plugins in the ecosystem. We want to see more and more of those types of plugins I was giving an example of in this talk. Um, we know that WebDriver Agent is a kind of aging technology at this point. It's what powers our XUI test driver. And we would love uh, some help probably in evaluating that technology and seeing how we can improve it. Um, or you know, do something new as iOS technology from Apple continues to evolve. And we want to keep exploring WebDriver Badai and see what kinds of new automation behaviors and capabilities um, we can we can expose to you all uh, to improve the way your tests work. Um, and then yes, we want more maintainers always with an open source project. Uh, please come and help us. Um, to that end, uh, I wanted to just briefly touch on um, our new contributor compensation scheme, which is very exciting. Um, we have a sponsorship program now, which lets companies uh, give us money as the Appium project. Um, very excitingly, um, our main two sponsors, what we call strategic partners nowadays, are uh, Sauce Labs and Browser Stack. And uh, they're donating money to the Appium project every month. And we've decided with this money um, to open up a compensation scheme to actually pay people, you know, cold hard cash for contributing to Appium, um, which just feels really great to give something back to people that are contributing to the project, whether they're maintainers or even just one-time contributors. So um, we've actually just sent out 
our first round of, of payments to you know dozens of people who've contributed over the last couple months and um, it's very very exciting to be able to give even in a small way uh, to people who have spent time on the project so uh, if you contribute to Appium you can look forward to you know maybe receiving um, a notification that you're your change is uh, is eligible for compensation. So thanks again to Browser Stack and Sauce Labs for making that possibility for us. Uh, and as always, you can help us uh, make Appium better. Um, you know, documentation is always huge. Creating more drivers and plugins in the ecosystem, um, making small contributions, and maybe getting paid for them. Uh, and being nice to our sponsors, right? Uh, saying thank you to them for how they're helping uh, develop and um, maintain the Appium community as well. So very, very uh, fast paced State of the Union here. Um, special thanks to um, some of the other core maintainers for giving me ideas about things to talk about. And now I will leave it up to Naresh to uh, tell us how much time we have Four questions, and I'll be happy to spend as much time uh, as as uh, as I can. Cool. Thanks, uh, Jonathan. I think uh, we've uh, just started getting some questions in the Q and A. So let's see. Uh, depending on how many questions, I guess we can spend easily five to ten minutes. Um. Hi, Peter. Um, recognize you from different places. Let's see if you could dictate or assign to the class one plugin that you'd love to see developed, what would it be? Wow, that's that's interesting. Um, like a new plugin that I could have any plugin that I want. Oof. Um, I'm gonna think about that in the back of my mind as I answer another question or two. Um, Honestly, well, maybe I'll just say something like I, I for a while I had this um, this Unity uh, game plugin that allowed people to automate um, games developed in Unity, um, but that's been sort of discontinued because the underlying technology was um, made kind of not free, and so it was less accessible. I still think there's a there's a huge opportunity, and it's a very difficult job, right? So that's why it's not been done yet. But I think there's a huge opportunity for a plugin or a driver that really does game automation well. And I don't even know the where you'd begin with that. I think it would involve, you know, getting into the game development SDKs or frameworks in order to register game objects and information about them. Um, so this is what the Alt Unity project has done. Um, I think something something like that, maybe for for other uh, game platforms as well. I think I think we could do a lot more, a lot more with games than is currently done. So anyway, that'll be my answer for now, Peter. Thank you. Uh, VJ, how can we start our contribution to Appium? Um, yeah, a couple of different ways to get involved. Um, a kind of common path to becoming a contributor is to start as somebody who helps out in the community, right? So we have Appium forums, we have an Appium issue tracker on GitHub, hanging out there, kind of reading the questions that people have. If, if you're kind of an Appium expert from a user perspective, just starting to dig into people's issues, reading their Appium logs and helping them solve their problems will, I think, a, make the community fall in love with you because everybody loves when people help them with their problems. So you could just get a lot of goodwill for doing that. And then it could suggest a way into, for example, a bug that you uncover either of your own or for someone else. That could be a great first place to say, okay, well, where is the code where this is happening and kind of start tracing the code um, or just reaching out to the maintainers and saying, here's a bug, I'd like to fix this, or here's a feature, I'd like to add this, but I don't know exactly where to start. We're usually pretty friendly and helpful uh, when people show an eagerness to contribute in giving them pointers. Um, so yeah, I mean, for myself, I typically find it works best to contribute when I have 
uh, a need, right? I run into a bug, I run into something I think could be better, and then I decide, okay, well, I'm going to just make this happen. So how do I do that? And you just work backwards from there and read code and ask questions. So that's what I would recommend. Um, let's see. Uh, Shivaram asks, is Appium 2 faster than Appium 1.22? Um, the question is almost impossible to answer um, because most of what's changed between Appium 1 and Appium 2 uh, is not on the plane of Appium where things take time. Where things take time is in the drivers, and the drivers didn't really change much between Appium 1 and Appium 2. Um, I would suspect that Appium 2 is the same or faster, um, but we haven't done any server benchmarks because the long pull in the tent in terms of uh, time is usually in the drivers, not the Appium server itself. So um, yeah, whether let's say the XUI test driver has gotten faster over the last year is not something I'm, I'm aware of. There are probably optimizations that have been done. We generally optimize instead of de-optimize, but uh, yeah, um, unfortunately I don't have a very clear answer to that because of uh, the nature of the Appium architecture. Uh, let's see, is there a plugin for simulating different network conditions? Currently we're using the network link conditioner for iOS. I haven't heard of one actually, um, but that's a good example of an Appium plugin that somebody could create that maybe just uses a network link conditioner under the hood. I know that there's um, some command line tools for Mac OS that can adjust the uh, the um, network on a host device that could work for simulators. That would be relatively easy to implement as a plugin. But um, so yeah, I don't think there's one that I've heard. Uh, so yeah, please um, please go ahead and make it and, and let me know, and we will we'll promote it. Is there a separate chat for App Appium contributors? Yeah, there is a, an Appium maintainers Slack channel that's kind of reserved for people who are working on Appium or contributing. It's not really for support, but um, yeah, there you can just join the Appium, the Appium Slack group if you're contributing to Appium or wanting to contribute to Appium and have questions about Appium uh, development or need some pointers, that's, uh, that's totally fine. Um, uh, we've got one of the most asked questions of all time, which is about snapshot max step being set to two, um, on Appium. Uh, the issue here is not actually with Appium or the Appium inspector. The problem is with, uh, react native and the way that it builds out its element tree, uh, and the way that iOS handles that. So unfortunately with react native apps, for some reason, they tend to create um, massive element trees. And at a certain depth, the iOS uh, accessibility engine or something in iOS kind of way below the level that Appium operates at um, kind of freezes or stalls when you work with very large element trees. And so the point of snapshot max depth is to get around this uh, freeze, right? So if you tell Appium, don't look for elements below this level of nesting, then you then your app won't freeze and your test will be able to continue. Unfortunately, it does mean you won't be able to see elements that go below that depth. So uh, at this point, the main fix is just to talk to your React Native developer or your app developer and tell them like, don't nest your elements so deep, please, because it's, it's uh, messing with our tests. Um, are there any plans, this is from, if to some, are there any plans to improve Im the images plugin to do more sophisticated visual testing with dynamic content similar to how Apple Tools does? Um, there aren't any plans to significantly improve that at the moment. Um, but if somebody has an idea of how to improve it, we would obviously welcome those changes. Um, you know, Apple Tools has obviously spent many years developing extremely sophisticated approaches and and algorithms and uh, machine learning models and whatnot to do what they do, uh, we're not likely to um, match that anytime soon. But if there's some more utility that we can get in the images plugin, uh, we're happy to consider that. If there are specific requests or specific ideas of how to achieve them, just open up a ticket 
on the Appium repo, please. Um, looks like last question. Anil says uh, that uh, their React Native app is facing an issue. How can we contribute to Appium to fix the issue? Um, how can we figure out the actual issues since the Appium logs are not enough? That's a hard question to answer without knowing any of the specifics, just because, um, yeah, if it's an issue with the application itself, there are often not indications on the Appium side of things of what's going on. I would say the next step is to clarify exactly the nature of the issue, read the iOS system logs. If it's like a, if it's a crash, for example, there'll be something in the iOS system logs um, that you can look at and maybe find a stack trace or a crash report or something like that. So, cool. yeah. We're pretty much out of time. Uh, I know it's late for some folks, so probably we'll wrap up uh, if that's okay, Jonathan. That's great. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, apologies for the uh, breathless pace of this presentation, but I wanted to pack a lot of updates in, uh, and especially let you know about WebDriver by Die, which is an important new thing that we'll all be learning more about. And um, thanks for your for your questions, and thanks so much to Conf Engine and Conf Engine staff and volunteers for this conference. I can't express how amazing it is to have a team that basically just runs this whole thing. Um, they're really, really great. And uh, this is a, a huge gift and blessing to the community to uh, to have folks who are able to organize this conference for us. So um, please, please continue to support Conf Engine and, and go to all their conferences. And um, yeah, I guess that's it for me. 